This is the Blurry Out with Eric Blair Show with the Misfits. And I'm here today with Cherry Only. Cherry, how are you doing today? Very good, thanks. And I guess Michael Graves is going to be coming in a little later? Yeah, he's coming up. That's the, uh, the, the the youth element there, dragging a little bit behind. Yeah? He'll, how, be, he'll be up in a few minutes. How old is he? Uh, 22. When we picked him up, he was 19. And uh, he's come a long way in a short amount of time. Real proud of him. He's a great singer. Yeah, he is. Good showman, too. What brought about the resurrection of the Misfits? Uh, well, in my opinion, the Misfits was always a really great idea. And uh, what winds up going on is that if you let people push you around and keep you away from your goals in life, then you're, you're always going to be a loser. And it just seemed to me that it was something very valuable to, to the kids and to us. So we went out there and fought for it and got our name back and, and got it going. But we've always planned on bringing the Misfits back. It just took us a hell of a lot longer than we had anticipated. Why do you think the Misfits legacy has endured the test of time? I think that the Misfits is based upon the essence of rock and roll. It's based upon the 1950s chord blues patterns and uh, we're selling you something that you, you grew up with and that you've known your whole life and that's been inbred into you. And the only thing is we make it our own. We put the, the horror element behind it. We use a lot of imagery, a lot of showmanship, uh, a lot of real hard uh, equipment that we build ourselves. And um, it's very exciting. And I think that the fact that we stay away from elements like uh, politics and things like this is what winds up setting us apart and making the music pretty much immortal. Is there still bad blood between you and Glenn Danzig? Oh, uh, well, I gotta be honest. When I was young, Glenn kind of weaned me into this kind of music and taught me just about what I needed to know to get going. Uh -huh. And I really don't have any bad blood toward Glenn. I wish Glenn would be in a position where he'd be a lot more willing to work with people and hear what other people have to say. And uh, that's kind of been one of his throwbacks. And um, we're nobody's, you know, we're nobody's puppets, and, and that's not going to happen. So, uh, you know, I don't have any bad blood. He might, but, you know, that's once again his problem. Is it true that um, you actually, you guys approached Glenn about... Uh joining the Misfits when you were going to get the Misfits back together? Yeah, we did. Uh, I felt, I thought about it for a while, and uh, Doyle and I sat there, and we, th we thought, and I said, well, what do you think we should do? And he said, well, we should talk to Glenn and see if he'd be interested in putting it back together. And I said, well, I don't know if we should work with Glenn on a real long-term, ongoing basis because of the past history of working with him being a problem. And what happened was, to, to, for our fans, I thought we owed it to our fans to ask him. And by doing this, we wound up being real big people to go out there after a 10-year court battle yeah. and turn around and just say, hey, do you want to you know, come and, and, and rock with us one more time yeah. for all time's sake? And uh, I did it for the kids. So uh, when the kids come up to me and they say, hey, Jerry, you know, you know, where's Glenn? You should have got Glenn. I say, hey, look, I asked the guy. He said no. And that's the bottom line. For example, in uh, 1978, we went on tour with The Damned, and Dave Anian was a very good singer, in my opinion. He was very uh, flamboyant on the stage. He had a great image, great stage presence. And uh, he was the first person I had asked even before Glenn to see if he was interested and he never got back to me so I waited about five or six months and we were working with Michael and I just said well forget it I said you know I wait 13 years I'm not waiting exactly. another, I'm not waiting another day exactly so we go and do it and uh, Glenn, Glenn taught us that too because after the Misfits broke up I thought that it would have been uh, a hard period for him to get something as good and move forward but he put Sam Hain together right away and kept going and you look at those kind of instances and you say to yourself well the persistence of the whole issue is really what gets you through it. So taking Michael and going with it, I think, was the smartest thing that we did instead of sitting back and waiting for a blue chipper to come in and front the band. One big pit. You've been to a show before, I see. We want to make this place one big pit. If you want to see Glenn Danzig, sir, he's playing down the road. This album sounds excellent. Well, in my opinion, uh, it's the finest work we've done. Big backup vocals? That's one of our trademarks. So uh, the backup vocals is something that we've been working on. Uh, kids who are out there singing in bands, we go for vocal lessons. Everybody I know who's a really great vocalist. Yeah, I heard you doing, working out yeah. the vocals Okay, today. yeah, you saw me out the window there, right? Yeah. I was hanging out the window doing my vocal lessons. We got a vocal teacher, Don Lawrence, out of New York. Uh, he works with uh, Sebastian Bach and... Uh, from uh, Skid Row uh -huh. and uh, Bon Jovi, uh, Joey Ramon goes to him, I go to him, and I'm not afraid to say that because 
anybody that thinks they know how to sing should really go get professional coaches, show them what they're doing wrong, and it improves what you do. That's why, like, for example, I always knew that bringing back the Misfits, one, the music would be better, it would be more powerful because we built better equipment over the years. Second, that the backup vocals and the vocals, the lead vocals, would have to be strong, as strong or stronger to make our band credible to all our old fans. We yeah. would have to be better than we were exactly. to get everybody's attention. And um, that's why we immediately took everybody and went for vocal lessons. And we're not ashamed to say it. And the first, you know, anybody that's out there professionally singing should really consider it if they're not doing it now. How did you create the Misfits look? I'll, I'll be honest. The, the biggest influence on me when it came time for the image was the Ramones. Uh, Glenn and I went, we used to hang out at CBGB's in Manhattan. Uh -huh. And we were down there and he looked like, uh, you know, your average guy and I looked like your average guy and we were just hanging around and in walked the Ramones and they looked like an army. They come walking through the door and all four of them looked the same and you looked at them and in the whole room you knew right away who was in the band and who wasn't. Yeah. And when I looked at that, I said to myself, I said, now that's the kind of band I want. When they walk into a room, everybody turns around and you can tell if, ever, if you're scattered throughout a thousand people, yeah. who's in the band. It's very easy to tell. And uh, when we were playing in places like Max's Kansas City back in the uh, early, uh, late 70s, uh, it just came, the, the horror image came to us and then we start evolving with it and then each individual in the band has a slightly different look. Yeah. We're not clones of each other. Everybody's yeah. got a little bit of a slightly different image. And I think it's important that each person in the band develops that image themselves. So they're very personal with it, that they work very hard on their image. And uh, the two new guys we got do very well with that. And as you know, Doyle, I mean, Doyle looks great. You played Max's Kansas City and you hung out at CBG. Did you ever like get to hang out with Deborah Harry? Uh, it's funny because uh, I've, I've always loved her and uh -huh. I, I got some early posters of her and she looks fantastic yeah. and we were at a CMJ convention I think it was like in 87 and we were dressed up handing out misfit posters uh -huh. we were trying to get the you know people to realize that we were still alive yeah. without Glenn we didn't have any authority to release anything or play yeah. but I figured let me let everybody know we're alive so we got dressed up Doyle and I we went down there signing posters we brought a, a hand truck uh, full of posters to, to give away and Deborah Harry was walking through the crowd and she had sunglasses on and nobody noticed her except for me. I said, I said, Doyle, that's Blondie over there, you know. So I went running up to her, I gave her a big kiss. I said, Man, I said, I loved you my whole life, you know. That is hot. Yeah, yeah. And she she smiled and she just walked right past and like none of the kids there yeah. knew it was her. But I picked it up right away. I saw Blondie open for Iggy Pop at the Palladium in New York. It was great. Oh, man. She came out in like a uh, mini skirt, black leather. Yeah. She looked like a biker girl. Oh, she looked fantastic. That's still, after auditioning some 200 singers, how did you know Michael was the chosen one? Because he didn't know any of our stuff. <laughs> the cool. thing is with Michael, uh, we were recording, we, we had a tape from Max's Kansas City, a live tape, where we do Blue Christmas. Uh -huh. And the instruments were recorded like crap. So we went to the studio. It was me, Chud, and Doyle and in one take blew out the entire album just ran it like, like it was a live gig just played it and back then it was like from 78 or 79 so it was real slow so for us to play the stuff we've been practicing for the last 20 years at a very slow pace was no problem and the guy at the studio tells us he goes look I got this really great young singer he's in another band why don't you see if he's something that you're looking for and uh, I contacted Michael and he came down and he didn't know any of our material. So I gave him a Walk Among Us album and the lyrics. And I said, look, I want you to go home and, and hear what's going on and know the song. But I don't want you to come back and mimic this guy. I said, that's the last thing I'm looking yeah. to do. So he came back and he did like songs like Vampire and stuff. And they had a little bit different hook to him and a little different feel to it. And I think that's the one thing about doing old material with Michael that I really like. Is that it's got a new feel yeah, to it's it. It's reborn. Yeah, it is reborn. And, you know, it's just somebody else's interpretation of what we had done. And. And to my uh, feelings, I think that he, he improved on a lot of different things that came down the pipe. And uh, he was very young and he was a little bit green and I was you know I was thinking on guys like uh, Glenn Devaney and yeah. you know uh, other people who were out there very popular and I said well I says I can deal with somebody who's got a big name and a big ego and a whole bunch of lawyers and all this kind of crap or I can go get somebody who's really young who just really wants, wants it back it. yeah and that's exactly. all key you gotta want it let's talk about your new CD American Psycho you had 35 songs yeah. ready for the album but you only picked 17 so how did you like narrow them down we had a vote and uh, everybody got 15 choices and then we looked at the total uh, any songs that there was five of us who voted it was uh, me Doyle obviously Chad Michael 
Daniel Ray, and uh, what happened was we all picked our top 15 songs. And any songs that got five out of five obviously made the album. All the songs that got four out of five made the album. And then it was a toss up between the last, let's say five songs that got three choices. So then we had to sit down and say, well, out of these five songs, everybody picked two or something like this. So we actually voted it democratically because then there was no uh, arguing over, well, I thought my song was better than your song. And that's the one thing that I tried to eliminate from this band was any of this me, my, your bullshit. It's us. That's the bottom line. And it wound up working out well. I think the album did very well as a result of it. And the other songs that didn't make, we recorded 22 out of the 36. Okay. But uh, it wound up working out really well. And I think that's the way we'll do it again next time. What has the fans' reaction been to the new album? Well, I got a lot of people who are so bent on the old stuff that they won't even listen yeah. to the new stuff. And I feel bad for them because, you, you know, you really can't bring back the 70s or the 80s. And if you could, why would you? I mean, that's the really the, the, the thing that aggravates me is why would you do something? You weren't there. You don't know. Today, the scene is so much stronger and so much better. And... Um, you know, people, our kind of music is now an accepted thing. And as a result, I think that if you're still working along those lines, you can do a much better job. And I think American Psycho shows that. Hey, Mikey. There he is. Get him, boys. All right. Get there. him, boys. Boy, you're really decked out tonight, man. Yeah, he looks big. Michael, what was it like making the video for Dig Up Her Bones? It was very buggy. We shot it out in uh, a, a big open field up in Vernon, where these guys live, um, mm -hmm. in the back of, of Rocky's house, who, who's our manager. Um, and I mean, we had all the lights, uh, you know, we, we brought in ourselves, and it, it was cool. There was just billions and billions of bugs, and the cops actually came down, because from the road, mm -hmm. it looked like something had landed yeah. in, in the field. Um, it was interesting. It, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I've always wanted to, to be in a video and, and, and make a video. So it was it was exciting for me. Being pretty new at this, mm -hmm. I want to know what it was like for you working with big producers like Daniel Ray and Andy Wallace. Uh, Daniel Ray and I. Daniel Ray is a good producer, um, but his views kind of were a little bit different, mm -hmm. more different than, than mine. I made a lot of rookie mistakes making the first album, but uh, working with Daniel was cool. Um, I learned a lot from him. Uh, working with Andy Wallace um, was also cool. You know, uh, I mean, he, he's worked with uh, Nirvana. He's done Slayer. He did yep. Rancid, um, and so it was a dream of mine always to you know to work with with Andy Wallace, uh, especially because the work that he did on the Nirvana album, uh, Nevermind, was tremendous. Yeah. So I, I approached Geffen and, and asked if if we can get Andy Wallace. And, really? Yeah. And uh, he's he's from New Jersey, so he cool. called up and, and he said, yeah, that he would do it. People don't realize how important mixing yeah. an album is. Yeah. That can make or break an Definitely. album. What CDs are Misfits currently listening to? A lot of Ramones. We, when we're lifting, we listen to the Ramones. We've been listening to uh, Motorhead. Cool. Um, let's see, what do, I, what do I have on tour with me? I will listen to uh, David Bowie, Hunky Dory. That's a good album. Um, I have the Sisters of Mercy with me. Uh, I have a Black Crow CD that I'm listening to. Which one? Um, actually, their new one. No, my brother happens to think that's a really good album. It's really good. I, I'm a big Black Crows fan. Uh, I saw them in CBGB's in New York City like, oh God, six years ago. Uh -huh. It was insane. It was great. What do you guys enjoy most about being on the road? The food. <laughs> no. Really? Hmm. I think, to tell you the truth, the togetherness, the fun that we have uh, amongst each other. Uh, I mean, we, we of course we dig playing. We really like to play, but if if we didn't have as much fun as as we do together, I think it'd be over in a second. You know, for a tour, we like to say it's like camp for big retarded kids. <laughs> We're really having a good time on this we, tour. We have a blast with each other. What CDs are you really hot on right now that you're listening to that are out? Oh, I don't even listen to anything. I listen to oldies. Uh, this is where I pick up like a lot of the background stuff. Yeah, that's all I listen to. I, I always have. I like a lot of the Jay Black and the American stuff. This Magic Moment. Uh, uh, this magic. Yeah, uh, Dion and the Belmonts. Yeah. Uh, run, run around. Yeah, show. that's a great uh, song. You know, Del Shannon, Hats Off to Larry, things yeah. like this. So, um, you know, that's how that's what we're based on. We're based on that kind of music. So it winds up being a good thing for us. And 
to for, for me anyway to listen to that and it's good because Mikey listens to a lot of the new stuff so it, 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 it brings that perspective into it too and everybody has their own element that they kind of bring in and it, it, it works out well it's a very good chemistry did you ever see the movie The Lords of Flatbush yes you totally remind me of one of those <laughs> guys man what's your favorite horror movie ladies and gentlemen Uh, I like the original Frankenstein. I'm a big Carlo fan. Me too. I love the original Frankenstein. Yeah, I think that's uh, it's way ahead of its time that movie, and uh, the 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 fact that it gives the monster a personality is is really big because you know it, it, he's like a misfit. I mean, you know, he's just not accepted, and that's the problem. Mike, ah, uh, the first Poltergeist. I'm into ghosts. Carolyn, yeah. there you go. The beast is calling. Yeah. Carolyn, Carolyn. He's got the last poster of Poltergeist. The guy sold it to him. I says, "Yeah." Then he goes in the back and opens up the, the case and pulls out another last one. Really? Yeah, he bought Poltergeist poster today. What is your favorite Disney movie? Uh, I like Beauty and the Beast. You, Mike? It's a toss-up between Pete's Dragon and Something Wicked This Way Comes. It's an old one. Scared right? the shit out of me. Yeah. With the carnival, where yes, with the old guy. Oh, I seen it. And he died. He gets electrocuted. He gets hit by lightning on the uh, on the carousel. Wow. And there's a scene in that. And the and girl the, wants to be pretty, and she becomes blind or something, and yes. she's like dancing, yes. and she can't see and where a, she's there's going. There's a, there's a, oh, it's pretty sick. There's a scene in the movie where the kid is laying in bed. It fucked me up as a kid. And the lightning hits hits uh, the lightning rod on the house, and all these friggin' spiders, these tarantulas, are, are all over this kid's room. He gets up from bed, and he's got uh, bare feet, and he's stepping on the spiders. Oh. Man, there you go, cat. <laughs> Who do you think is the sexiest woman alive? See, now, I have a girlfriend, so I have to say my girlfriend. But um, <laughs> I'm a big Jenny McCarthy fan. Yeah, I like um, her. We ran into her in Las Vegas. It was a big moment for me. Was she cool to you? I was too nervous to talk to her. Really? I swear, yeah, so I sent Doyle over to talk to her. Who's the sexiest woman alive? Um, well, apparently you think Jenny McCarthy. I guess today. Jenny McCarthy, Do you have that yeah. poster of her? No, uh, we have it hanging up in, in our music room in Vernon. I, I had seen her, you know, you see her on Singled Out, you see her on Playboy. Yeah. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, we were in Las Vegas, we are at the Hard Rock, because we are playing the show with Megadeth, and uh -huh. there she was. I almost threw up, you know? Because, uh -huh. like, there she is. Like I'm somebody you've been dreaming about your whole life. Yeah, so she's pretty sexy. What was high school like for you, man? High school was like a nightmare. It was like a five-year nightmare. I got kicked out my first year of, of public school. I, I, I went um, to Dumont High. I grew up in Dumont, New Jersey. Okay. Um, Got in all sorts of trouble, uh, got kicked out. Uh, then I went to, they put me in like a secondary type school. Um, it, it was like a special services. I went to school on the little bus. Ew. And the school that they put me in was like a secondary school. It had a, a rehab in it. The school was Rockley and it was like a big campus. Uh -huh. And I'm just the troublemakers of New Jersey. Yeah. Like, it was like one step from being in jail. And you had to fight and all the time to survive. Exactly. Yeah. It was bad news. So I, I spent two years in that school. And then they had moved my program, which was like a music and arts program. Uh -huh. They try to get you like, you know, influenced to do schoolwork through music and art, which is very cool. Yeah. Um, and they moved us out of there, and I, I went. I moved around to different schools, same program. But um, in the end, I graduated with straight A's, so I guess it was pretty cool. So what's next for the Misfits? We're gonna finish out this tour, this Halloween tour. Uh, we go to Japan in December. Uh, then we're gonna come back. Uh, I'd like to take. I think we want to take some time off, a couple of months, just to get our heads together. Uh, Doyle has a new a new baby who who just started crawling the other day. Mm, cool. He started crawling around. Um, so he's going to spend time, you know, with, with his kid. Um, and I guess, uh, I don't know, start working on some new music and stuff uh, and then go back out in the spring. Um, you know, eventually we, we want to write a new album uh, and, you know, get back out on the road. How, how successful has this tour been for you so far? It's been pretty good. We're starting to sell out a lot of different, you know, different venues uh, that we couldn't have sold out uh, a year ago. So it's 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 getting there. It, it's getting there. And what's your what's the biggest venue you've played on this tour? Have you been to Europe yet? Yeah, we've we've been to Europe. Uh, the we the biggest venue we've played was with Megadeth. We played America West Arena in Phoenix, uh, which was great. Uh, the biggest venue I think so far was Roseland in New York City. We sold it out with Guar, which is like 3,500 people. That's cool. Which was tremendous. It was really cool. I just want to thank you, man. Great interview. Thank you. And you guys rock. Thank you. This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show with the Misfits. Signing off. Goodbye. The Blaring Out show.